Hi there, I'm glad to welcome you to my channel, World of Stories. I have a lot of interesting life stories that I want to share with you. Enjoy listening. The November day outside the office window was slowly coming to an end. Irritation had been building up since the morning, reaching its peak by evening. Oliver thought, a little more, and I'll snap at someone. I need to hurry home to the embrace of my incomparable Elizabeth. Only she knows how to bring me back to a normal state. With the usual motion of shutting down the computer he had been behind all day, the head of the supply department hastily left his office. Upon his appearance, his secretary Emma stood at attention, but she managed to report briskly. Oliver, I've completed all your tasks. Good job, and I hope for the same prompt work in the future, replied Oliver. The secretary, in such an unnatural pose for a glamorous girl, looked quite funny, and the boss couldn't resist. He loudly commanded, at ease. The girl, startled, twitched her entire body, and the boss had to apologize, sorry, Emma, I guess I was too loud. I used to be a sergeant in the army, developed a commanding voice. Wanted to become a military man, but then. The secretary held her breath and her doll-like eyelashes touched her beautifully arched eyebrows. Then I changed my mind, Oliver? Well, yes, otherwise I wouldn't be in this office. And you would have had to be a secretary to another boss. The girl looked at him with a devoted gaze. No, Oliver. I want to work with you. The secretary involuntarily reached her hand forward, as if wanting to touch the man's face, but immediately pulled it back. Sorry, Oliver. I just wanted to warn you not to forget about Monday. What, is today not Friday? Emma nodded with her neatly arranged hairstyle. Remind me, what do we have planned for Monday? The secretary's lashes fluttered upwards again. Exactly at eight, you have a TV shoot, and then a meeting with the chief, end of the month. Thank you, Emma, for reminding me. It's much more pleasant to talk to you than to Victoria. With whom? With Victoria, the virtual secretary. The girl beamed with happiness, and Oliver wanted to see the fluttering of her eyelashes again. Do you know why your position is called that, he asked. No, Oliver, I don't know. Emma, it's very simple. A secretary is a girl who knows how to keep her boss's secrets. That's the main virtue of representatives of your profession. The girl tried to absorb the information she received, and the tension in the centers hidden in her charming head was accompanied by frequent blinking of her eyelashes. The short interaction with the attractive secretary, who had settled in his office about a month ago, relieved some tension. Oliver even felt a surge of energy flowing through his veins. A troubling thought flashed in his mind, am I an energy vampire, and did I just recharge from this young lady? He was about to further explore this interesting topic, but Samantha suddenly materialized in all her glory near the elevator. They had once attended lectures together at the institute, and Samantha had even made attempts to melt his heart. Then, their paths diverged for several years, and six months ago, Samantha, now appointed as the deputy director, had come back into his life. However, the boss had several deputies, and Oliver was not exactly sure what mission was entrusted to Samantha's delicate shoulders. The woman genuinely rejoiced at the unexpected encounter. Oliver, you're positively glowing. Share the secret of your mood, since this morning, I've felt like kicking or scolding someone. First of all, greetings, Samantha. And secondly, just half an hour ago, I had similar desires, but I chatted with my secretary for a bit, and it all went away like magic. Interesting, and in what format did the relaxation session with your assistant take place? The elevator silently stopped, and the former classmates continued their conversation inside this means of transportation. Oliver detected a clear hint in the woman's tone. Samantha, I just talked to my employee. Why do you always lean in the wrong direction? Don't take offense, Oliver. I was just joking. Oliver, have you forgotten how to take jokes sensibly? Jokes can be different. I don't understand such ones. 
And why do many women think that everything in life is resolved through the bedroom? Don't generalize. I said many. Isn't it true, though? Arguing with you, Samantha, is pointless. I learned that back in our student years. Fortunately, not all women have the habit of joking about such things. For example, my wife never allows herself such remarks. Smart woman. Please convey my congratulations to her. The doors of the elevator silently opened again. Samantha confidently headed towards the parking lot but stopped halfway. Oh darn, I completely forgot that my car is in the repair shop. That's what it means to work until you drop. Forgetting about their recent dispute, Oliver suggested, as a sign of old friendship, I'll give you a ride. Thank you, Oliver. You're a true comrade and friend. The woman's face lit up with a smile, and two cute dimples appeared on her cheeks. Oliver thought that it was the most convenient moment to play a little trick on his former classmate, who loved spicy jokes. With a serious expression, he said. No, Samantha. Friendship won't cut it here. I do everything not selflessly. How should I understand you? Literally, Oliver replied, in a literal sense. There's a scheme, you scratch my back, and I scratch yours. Got the hint. Knock when you need it. I'll always help. That's the hope. You're now closer to the boss than anyone else. And you think it's easy? I'll confess to you that I've regretted accepting this position more than once. They happened to enter a dark passage, and the woman started to look around with caution. Oliver, where are you taking me? Where's your car? We've probably been wandering through these mazes for over a kilometer. Light appeared ahead, and Oliver solemnly declared, here is our convertible. Jump in, Samantha. The man gallantly opened the front door of the brand new car. You've got quite the ride, Oliver. A pretty cool car for a mere department head. Well, I don't waste time. I make some bets after work. My wife is also involved in some deals. Samantha leaned noticeably against Oliver's shoulder. Enough of your jokes, or I'll take you and report to the appropriate authorities. Oliver confidently drove the car, and his accidental passenger silently observed him. Samantha, hey, did you happen to fall asleep there? I thought we were going to talk. Oliver, I have nothing to tell. I've missed out on my personal life due to work. No, don't get me wrong. I've even managed to get married twice, as my grandmother would say. But both times were unsuccessful. I've been a bit luckier. I have a wonderful wife, but she disappears at work for days. She's a gynecologist. Wow. The road was completely jammed with cars, and there was almost no hope that this traffic jam would clear up in the next half hour. Oliver felt a new surge of irritation. Yes, we've unfortunately hit the peak hour. And I'm in no rush. What surprises me is one thing. We've known each other for so long, yet we have nothing to say to each other. All topics are exhausted in five minutes. Oliver's car came to a standstill again, then smoothly rolled on the rain-glistened road. Samantha initially looked around, but then her attention was drawn to the keychain swinging above the driver. Oliver, doesn't this thing bother you? It's not a bother, Samantha. It's my life talisman, my hippo Tasha. Oliver, I have a feeling that I've seen this toy somewhere, but a very long time ago. Anything is possible. Tasha and I have been together for a long time. He's been keeping me company for many years. It's a gift from someone very dear to me. Samantha noticed how Oliver's voice dimmed immediately. She wanted to ask him about something else, but Oliver preemptively asked. Where can I drop you off? To the old address, or have you settled in a new neighborhood? Oliver, you should be earning a living through fortune-telling, not sitting in the office. If it's not too much trouble, drop me closer to the center. Anyway, you won't squeeze into public transport now, and it's quite a hike on foot. 
Oliver laughed again. Why such extremes? Pretend you're in a taxi and tell me your address. And should I pay by the meter too? At the end of the month, we have promotions for regular customers. So, Samantha, you're lucky twice today. You met me by the elevator, not someone else. This leads to the second bonus. The car smoothly slowed down and stopped at the entrance to Samantha's building. The woman elegantly exited the car, just as she had gracefully entered it. Oliver, thank you. I'm so happy about this encounter. We had a nice chat. It feels like we've gone back to our restless youth. I was glad to see you too. Yes, you've changed a lot, Samantha. They say age ruins women. But you, on the contrary, have become beautiful and, well, I can't find the right words. Okay, Oliver, don't try too hard. You wanted to say that I'm now splendid. Credits to you for the original compliment. Oliver looked at his old friend. He felt a bit sorry that almost nothing remained of the former, naive Samantha. She now carried herself with dignity, not without a touch of pride. As a farewell, the woman briefly froze on the steps of the entrance and blew him an airy kiss. After a moment, she disappeared behind the massive metal door. For a few minutes, Oliver couldn't shake off the pleasant numbness. He was fully immersed in his thoughts, and his hands unconsciously manipulated the soft toy. A passerby's silhouette caught his eye, and Oliver snapped to attention. Well, Tasha, let's go home. From the window of her apartment on the fourth floor, Samantha saw the foreign car slowly start moving. He handles the car so skillfully. And in general, I like this type of man. They say you can't bring back the past, but I'll try. Samantha was one of those women accustomed to getting what she wanted. But Oliver had no idea what role his former classmate would soon play in his life. On the approaching steps to her apartment, Oliver felt that his wife was preparing a surprise for him. Even on the staircase, meaty aromas generously spiced with spices reached him. He quietly opened the door, but Elizabeth managed to sense him. Her satisfied voice came from the kitchen. Oliver, you're early today. I've just started working on a new amazing dish, so you'll have to be patient. He walked into the kitchen and tenderly kissed his wife. Hello, dear. I thought you had duty again today. I thought I'd have to watch some boring series again and eat the traditional scrambled eggs. And here's a real culinary surprise. It smells amazing. I skipped lunch today, so I'm ready to devour a whole bowl. Bowls were sold out at the store, but I got a turkey breast instead. The meat is dietetic, so it's healthy. Just wait a bit, it'll be ready soon. For a few minutes, Oliver admired his wife's precise movements. Everything she did was skillful and beautiful. Without turning around, the woman said. If you keep staring like that, either I'll end up with a hole in my back, or the turkey won't turn out right. I'm just admiring you. I wonder, do you handle the operation table just as skillfully? The woman turned around. Oliver, your comparison in this situation is not just inappropriate, it's sacrilegious. Don't mix work and home. I wanted to please you, and you. And I'm delighted. No, I'm just happy that we can spend the whole evening together. It's been a while since we've had such an opportunity. And if I blurted out something irrelevant, don't pay it any mind. Tell me, for what reason did you decide to arrange a small feast for the two of us? Elizabeth pushed aside the wooden spatula and, with a cute kitchen glove, brushed a strand of hair from her forehead. Indeed, there is a reason, but don't pry it out of me yet. Suffer a little. This is cruel of you. Overall, today is such a strange day. An unexpected encounter with my classmate Samantha and your surprise. Plus, the new secretary Emma. And from this point, please, more details. Elizabeth took a pestle in her hands, as if hinting at the possibility of physical impact. Oliver pretended to be scared. 
Dear, put this tool back in its place, or I'm afraid you'll put it to use. The man stepped back two steps. You know, you look very impressive with this pestle. One could paint pictures from life. Don't talk nonsense. Who is Emma? Just a girl. Probably didn't go to college. I don't even know whose protege she is, but she works hard and is afraid of me. You know, today, for the first time, I felt like an old man next to this girl. Oliver didn't tell his wife that the young secretary reminded him of another girl from his distant youth. He involuntarily put his hand in the jacket pocket and came across something warm and soft. See, even Tasha will confirm that there was nothing wrong on my part. So, don't be jealous. I'm not jealous. Just pretending. Your Tasha is so cute. Why did you take him off? You said he was your talisman. It happened accidentally. Elizabeth approached her husband and looked into his eyes intently. Oliver, don't scold me. I think we should try again. The smile immediately disappeared from Oliver's face. Elizabeth, but we agreed not to tempt fate anymore. Why do you torture yourself with hope? The woman almost cried. Oliver, what if it works? It happens. I'm a doctor. I know many amazing cases. Some couples can't conceive for 20 years or more, and then, when there is no hope left, it miraculously happens for them. Again, due to excitement, Oliver felt a surge of irritation. Like during the day in the office. Elizabeth, I understand you, but also understand me. I'm not worried about myself, but about your condition. Two attempts have ended in failure and psychological trauma. You took several months to recover, and now you want to repeat it all again? I want to, Oliver. As long as we still have time, I don't want to miss any chance. I dream of a complete family, and it's impossible without children. Don't exaggerate, Elizabeth. Not everyone is given children. And such couples find a way out. Take someone else's child? Why not? Many raise children left without parents. After all, it's noble. Oliver, I'm not ready for that. I want to try again. The man shrugged. What can I say if you've already decided on your own? I consulted with you. You won't leave me, will you? Oliver hugged his wife and whispered quietly. I will never leave you because I love you very much. They stood there for a long time, holding each other tightly, listening to the rhythmic beats of their hearts. Oliver woke up in the middle of the night, as if someone had nudged him on the shoulder. The sensation was so real that he involuntarily rubbed that part of his body. He walked to the kitchen to get some water. The moon shamelessly peeked through the uncovered blinds, and its light distorted familiar objects beyond recognition. Oliver noticed a toy hippo on the coffee table, which, in the magical moonlight, appeared large and monstrous. He grinned and quietly sang to himself, and the hippo has nothing beyond. And will hit him with a teapot and make him dance. And you, under the moonlight, buddy, look like a monster, but I love you just the way you are, my talisman. All metropolises share one common feature. Time flows differently in them, in different parts. In the center, where everything is saturated with urbanism, it rushes at rocket speed, crushing familiar standards and traditions in its path. But on the outskirts, among two- and three-story buildings from the era of developed socialism, time stops to catch its breath. Such areas are usually called the Old City, and every million-plus city must have such a corner where one can hide from civilization. Oliver's childhood and youth passed in such a cozy place. Their family lived in an old building that miraculously survived. Everything was close by, school, shops, dry cleaning, and a movie theater. Therefore, there was no urgent need to go to the center, where everything boiled and seethed. But some residents of the micro-district had to make a one-hour journey on public transport every day to get to work. Oliver's parents, having a long and arduous commute, accustomed him from a young age to independence and tried to instill this in his younger brother, Logan. 
It was Logan who changed everything one day with a casual remark. One day, in broad daylight, his brother burst into the apartment shouting, Oliver, help! Those hooligans are beating ours. Vile scum attacked us. There are two of us and a couple of guys from the eighth grade. And there's a whole herd of them. The fresh bruise under Logan's left eye testified to another street fight between two rival gangs. Oliver didn't hesitate and went to help. The scene of the brawl turned into chaos, making it impossible to distinguish who was who. Fortunately, Oliver had a police whistle given to him by his father. He sometimes used it for fun. Assessing the situation, this time he decided to use the sound signal to disorient the enemy. The effect was instantaneous. The guys scattered in all directions. Bodies of our guys were lying on the asphalt. There were three of them. Oliver, with knowledge of the matter, remarked, and why did you, guys, get into a fight if there were three times more of them? Logan looked displeasedly at his older brother. It wasn't us who started it. They set an ambush for us. The boy rushed to one of the teenagers who were struggling on the asphalt, trying to get up. Aria, I'll help you now. My brother will figure out who these bastards are. I assure you, we will retaliate. Oliver rightly noted, Logan, you answer for yourself, and don't involve me. Who knows, maybe your company provoked the fight. The younger brother was almost suffocating with indignation. Oliver, I didn't expect this from you. And you call yourself a brother. Aria, tell him who started it. The person Logan was addressing finally took a vertical position. Oliver was surprised to realize that it was a girl. She fixed her disheveled hair, shook off her pants, and said bitterly, Logan, my grandmother will kill me. She bought me this suit just a month ago for special occasions. How can I show myself to her in this condition? Logan rubbed the back of his head. Yes, Arya, your situation is complicated. What intrigued Oliver the most was that not only did Arya not thank him for his timely intervention, but she completely ignored his presence. And when Logan, out of habit, referred to his older brother, the girl pursed her lips and looked at the young man with distrust. Logan, are you sure your brother won't report the fight to the vice principal? I already have enough trouble with the teachers, so it's better to bury this matter. They promised to put me on record, and my grandma has a weak heart. In short, thanks, but I'll handle it myself. There was something in the behavior of this girl, incredibly reminiscent of a movie actress, that made Oliver follow her. Arya, even though you're a brave girl, let me escort you anyway. She twitched her sharp shoulder and nodded in agreement. If you don't mind walking, go ahead, these frozen ones might ambush me near my house. By the way, Arya, are you sure your brother won't report the fight to the vice principal? I already have enough trouble with the teachers, so it's better to bury this matter. They promised to put me on record, and my grandma has a weak heart. In short, thanks, but I'll handle it myself. Arya raised her head proudly. For justice. Not only do they bully the little ones at school, take their money, but now they've started harassing us and even our breakfasts. But I doubt your brother won't report it to the vice principal. But aren't there other ways for Logan and the hooligans to settle their differences? Like what? Parent-teacher meetings, the school board. What are you talking about, Oliver? Or what's your name? Teachers are afraid of those thugs themselves, and the police can't handle them either because Carter is their guide, and his father is an officer. So only public outrage can temporarily calm those scumbags. So, if I understand correctly, public outrage means you, Logan, and your comrades? Yes, you're clearly outnumbered. And in my humble opinion, such matters should be resolved by men. Girls shouldn't get involved in fights. Aria's eyes flashed with a wicked sparkle. What's with the trend of lecturing? As if you're much older than us. Oliver calmly replied. Maybe not much, but at least five years. I've already finished school this year. Got my diploma. 
Arya inquired. Why didn't you apply to college if you're so smart? The girl spoke with undisguised sarcasm. Oliver sighed heavily. Apparently, I'm not that smart. Didn't get enough points. I failed. Unexpectedly, Arya softened her tone. Don't be upset, you'll get in next year. I don't know if it will work out. Most likely, I'll be drafted into the army. Arya looked at the young man with undisguised admiration. I've never had such a grown-up guy. The girl realized she had made a foolish remark and tried to correct her mistake. Don't think I'm trying to make friends. And I wanted to say that high schoolers don't pay any attention to us. Even at the disco, they just walk by. And you're talking to me calmly. Oliver laughed. What's so surprising about that? People should communicate. The whole world is built on that. And why did you suddenly switch to formal you? I'm not an old man with a beard for you to address me formally. Arya laughed heartily too, and when she calmed down, she asked. Oliver, can you teach me some cool tricks? Of course, I can. But you have to promise me that you won't get into fights anymore. I really don't want your pretty face to get hurt. The girl flirtatiously winked. Did you just say, I'm pretty? Well, yes, it's customary to give compliments to ladies. And anyway, all women, regardless of age, are beautiful. In the evening, it turned out that Logan and Arya were in the same class. The younger brother explained. She came to us a couple of years ago. Yes, exactly. It was in the fifth grade. I remember the teachers asked us not to bully the orphan. Arya has no parents. Only a grandmother. But very soon everyone understood that this girl could put anyone in their place. Well, we respected her. Oliver had almost forgotten about Arya. But about a month after the autumn brawl, Logan came home from school looking pensive. Oliver got a temporary job as a store guard, so the younger brother was under his constant control. Logan, what's your problem? Did you get into trouble at school? The boy sarcastically remarked. Oliver, you're worse than our ancestors. You're watching me, asking all these questions. Look after yourself better. Don't be angry, little brother, but that's how it is. It's in your best interest. I don't want you to get into an unpleasant situation because of some nonsense. You know, sometimes pure chance can ruin a life, and you're my little brother. And I just have to take care of you. Spill it, what happened with you guys? Did that girl Arya cause trouble again? Logan's eyes became perfectly round. How do you know? What kind of trouble has your girlfriend gotten into this time? Logan spread his hands in confusion, trying to gather his thoughts. I still don't know for sure, but Arya is in the hospital. The guys said she broke her leg. Lately, she got into parkour, but something went wrong, and Arya fell. Luckily, it wasn't very high, or she could have been seriously injured. Oliver was shocked by this news, and Logan took advantage of the pause and slipped into the kitchen. We decided with the guys to visit Arya. We need to prepare a little gift for her. Hold on, Logan. The boy looked at his older brother in surprise. What, are you too stingy to spare an apple for Arya? You didn't understand me, little brother. For a good friend, nothing is too much. So we'll drop by the grocery store now and buy some goodies for your Arya. I got paid yesterday. I want to spend the money on a good cuz. Logan was jumping for joy. Hooray, my brother is a cool dude. In the hospital, the brothers were looked at with suspicion. Some pilgrimage to her today. Well, okay, come in. Right at the door of the ward where Arya lay with her suspended leg, the brothers encountered a group of classmates. Logan asked. Well, how is she? A serious case. Arya is probably stuck for a long time. Her grandmother is really worried. Indeed, 
Next to the bed of the sick girl sat an attractive woman who resembled the young daredevil a lot. But it was difficult to call this lady a grandmother because she looked no older than fifty. That is, she was about the same age as the brother's parents. When new visitors appeared, the woman smiled wearily. Logan, hello. Hello, Amelia. This is my older brother, Oliver. Nice to meet you. At least something pleasant in this day. The woman's eyes sparkled, and she took out a snowy handkerchief from her purse. I felt that something like this had to happen. My granddaughter became uncontrollable, especially in recent months. As if someone replaced my calm aria. Amelia directed all her complaints specifically to Oliver. Aria remained silent, staring blankly at an open book. You see, it happened that the girl remained under my full guardianship. I got married early myself, and my daughter followed a bad example. Then things didn't work out with her husband. He went somewhere to the other end of the world and disappeared. And then my daughter had an accident. She got hit by a car, and a drunk person was behind the wheel. I thought I wouldn't survive. It was only thanks to Arya that I coped with grief. Oliver felt that he needed to say something, and he blurted out. If you don't mind, I'll take guardianship of your granddaughter. Before Amelia could respond, Arya screamed at the top of her lungs. Awesome, I agree. All the girls will die of envy when they see who I'm friends with. The sick girl's grandmother tried to stop her enthusiasm. Arya, calm down. The doctor said you should lie still, or the fragments will shift. But joy overflowed. Grandma, you don't understand how cool this is. Oliver promised to teach me various techniques so that I can stand up for myself. Amelia looked at Oliver imploringly. Is it safe? Don't worry, practicing real sports is much more beneficial than running on roofs. I really hope for your help. Unnoticed, Oliver became an indispensable helper for Amelia. In his free time from guarding the store, he helped the woman with household chores. He chopped wood, carried water. The thing is, the grandmother and granddaughter lived in a house where they hadn't yet managed to install the necessary utilities. Therefore, the young man's help was more than welcome. Twice a week, Oliver and Arya attended training sessions together. The young man immediately warned his ward. If you throw a somersault, got it? Protégé. The girl muttered something under her nose, but it was noticeable that this warning had the desired effect. Arya improved in her studies. She even changed her hairstyle. One day, Logan winked conspiratorially at his brother. Oliver, don't you notice that Arya is head over heels for you? Of course, he understood perfectly well that the teenage girl felt deeper emotions for him than just friendship. But the age difference at this stage of life seemed so significant that the young man didn't even consider the possibility of more intimate relations with her in the distant future. Once, Amelia confessed. Oliver, you saved us. If it weren't for your involvement, I don't know where my aria would have ended up. But, how can I put this to you? Amelia, believe me, I never even considered such thoughts. Arya is like Logan to me, that is, like a younger sister. I didn't think otherwise, bad tongues just say all sorts of things. You and Logan have good parents. They raised such great guys. The brothers were proud of their mother and father themselves. But both wanted to follow in their father's footsteps. The head of the family was a military man, served in hot spots, and then switched to work in law enforcement. Therefore, Oliver was carefully preparing for the army, planning to enroll in a military academy after his service. The whole neighborhood bid farewell to Oliver when he went off to serve. But Arya was the one who worried the most. She cried without restraining her tears. Oliver, how will I live without you? I'll be back very soon, and we'll train together again. Are you not lying? Have I ever let you down? And you, cut it out with your antics. It's time to grow up a bit. And take care of your grandmother. She's wonderful. 
As a parting gift, Arya gave him a cute hippo. This is my talisman. His name is Tosha. Oliver accepted the gift but asked. Is Tosha a girl or a boy? With teenage sharpness, Arya replied. Of course, he's a boy. Let him protect you, they say it's tough in the army. Since that memorable day, the charming Tosha became a faithful companion in life. Although Oliver couldn't recall a single instance where this cute toy manifested its magical abilities in his life, its presence always comforted him. While Oliver served in the army, significant changes took place. Their family moved to a new neighborhood where modern life was bustling in all its manifestations. In the first days after his return, the young man visited his ward. In the grown-up girl, he could hardly recognize the carefree Arya, whom he had to pull out of fights. The schoolgirl was also embarrassed. Oliver, you've become so grown-up. In the army, all boys become men. But I'm glad that you haven't forgotten us, Oliver. Time passes, children grow up, and we age. You have no reason to complain, Amelia. The years pass by you without touching you with their wing. You still look delightful. Thanks for the compliment. What are you planning to do? I need to make up for lost time. I plan to continue my education. Arya asked with interest. Do you still want to become a military man? No, my plans have changed a bit. I've chosen a more peaceful profession. Today, new technologies are a priority, so I don't want to fall behind the times. And you, Arya, have you already decided on your choice? You still have one more year of school torture. You nailed it about the torture. But I still haven't decided. And honestly, my diploma is unlikely to allow me to get into the place I want. Amelia interjected. Finally, it got through to you. Oliver, do you think my granddaughter has changed? Not at all. The girl tried to reason with her talkative grandmother. Come on, please, don't. No, I'll say it. Let Oliver know about your antics. After catching her breath a bit, the woman continued. Imagine, my granddaughter took on a mission to determine who is right and who is to blame. I'm constantly called to school. She's rude to the teachers, argues with them. I wish this school would end sooner. Maybe then she'll get smarter when she starts living on her own. Oliver didn't have the opportunity to visit his grandmother and granddaughter often. He enrolled in college. Student life kept him busy. The guy didn't deny himself the pleasure of chatting with girls. Moreover, cute and lovely classmates sought to gain his favor. One of these contenders was Samantha, an activist, an athlete, and just a good friend. Oliver smiled at his memories because Samantha noticed the funny charm for a reason. She had indeed seen it before. Only before, the noticeable talisman adorned his cool bike, a gift from his parents. Arya somehow imperceptibly disappeared from his life. However, she also appeared in it. After high school, she decided to go to college, but chose an institution in another city. Before leaving, the girl called him herself. Oliver, I'm going to study abroad. Will you see me off? Why didn't you tell me earlier? Of course, I'll see you off. When and at what time? It turned out Arya was already at the station. He had to ask Logan to give them a lift in their father's car. The younger brother looked at him strangely but agreed. Okay, let's go. Just don't complain. I love high speeds. Indeed, Logan was a fervent racer. Several times, Oliver pressed into his seat and closed his eyes. Logan, have mercy. I still want to live. I need to get married and have children. The outlines of the station appeared in the distance. His brother slammed the brakes abruptly, resulting in an unpleasant screech. Without turning around, he asked. Do you want to marry Arya? Only at that moment did Oliver realize that his younger brother was in love with this girl. 
Logan, I had no idea. No, don't think that way. Aria is a sweet girl, but I have completely different interests. So, you can fight for your happiness. The main thing is, don't give up. A smile lit up Logan's gloomy face. He stayed in the car, waiting for his older brother. Aria was waiting on the platform. The girl scrutinized the faces of passers-by. She noticed Oliver's tall figure from a distance and waved her hand. Are you alone? Where's Amelia? I forbade her to see me off, otherwise, there would be a sea of tears right now. And it's easier for me this way. They stood there in silence. At that moment of parting, both realized that childhood had passed, and each had their own adult life. The conductor started hurrying the farewells on the platform. Citizens, passengers, take your seats. We depart in two minutes. Oliver nudged the girl towards the train. Go, or you'll be late. Aria hesitated, then blurted out. Oliver, didn't you ever notice that I love you? It was a cry of desperation and emotional pain. But the young man calmly replied. I noticed, even back then after the fight. And later too. Perhaps something could have happened between us, but not now. But you know, you're like a sister to me. Perhaps that circumstance hinders me from loving you. Tears streamed down Aria's cheeks. And I love you, but not as a brother. The conductor jumped into the car. Miss, let's hurry. You should have said, goodbye, earlier. There was plenty of time. Oliver helped Aria to jump onto the train on the go. Aria, remember. Whatever happens, you can always count on my help. The girl wiped away her tears childishly and waved to him. Oliver, Oliver. Be happy. I really want that. He watched the departing train for a long time and felt like something very important was leaving his life forever. That feeling haunted him for a long time. After moving from the old city to the new neighborhood, Oliver carefully got out from under the blanket, trying not to wake Elizabeth. But the woman mumbled quietly. It's still early. The doors to your office are still locked. I need to stop by somewhere before work. Again, you have some secrets. Whatever you want, I'll lie down a bit longer. I have a 24-hour shift today. Thanks for letting me know. After a quick breakfast, Oliver tiptoed back into the bedroom and gently kissed his wife on the cheek, which smelled of fresh herbs. You smell like summer. Is that good or bad? That's wonderful. That's why I fell in love with you. Oliver, go about your business. Let me sleep. At that moment, during the farewell at the station, he didn't expect that Aria's image would stay with him for a lifetime. He dated girls, had even serious relationships, but in every woman, Oliver searched for traces of Aria. Many times he tried to get rid of this persistent habit. He even took a course of some special sessions with a doctor. But nothing helped. Aria always stood before his eyes. He tried to find information about her and called Amelia, but she gave a strange answer to his question. Oliver, I don't really know where Aria is. I only know that she got her diploma, she visited me. And then she disappeared. It's been months since I heard anything about her. So, I can't tell you anything concrete. Logan also didn't know where his friend disappeared to. Besides, he had other things on his mind. He was finishing his studies at the military academy. Soon after, Oliver met Elizabeth, and he completely lost his head in love. Just a week after getting to know her, he proposed to her, and she agreed. Oliver couldn't understand for a long time what charmed him about Elizabeth, but in the first days of their life together, to his surprise, he discovered that his wife remarkably resembled Aria. She also wrinkled her nose cutely when she was angry, and she brushed her hair off her forehead with the same gesture. The man was afraid to admit to himself that he consciously brought his past into his life. 
but he loved Elizabeth in real life and planned to live with her until old age. The only thing that overshadowed their life together was the absence of children. They had undergone IVF twice. But both times, the pregnancy terminated a few weeks after the successful procedure. So, Oliver had every reason to worry about his wife's condition. But lately, another problem had emerged in the form of Sophia. His former classmate literally pursued him. And it seemed like Emma, the secretary, understood that the boss was avoiding the deputy director. As he was thinking about his assistant, she slipped cautiously into his office. Oliver, Samantha called. She asked you to come by as soon as you appear. Should I say that you went to the site? The man looked attentively at his assistant. Emma, weren't you taught in childhood that lying is not good? I thought you. In principle, you thought correctly. But sometimes you have to go against your own principles. So, I'll go talk to Samantha now. Noticing that the girl fluttered her eyelashes again, he asked. I see something else is bothering you? Did I make a mistake? No, Oliver. I mean, yes. Is it true that you studied together with her? It's true. Moreover, we even slept together during lectures. Oh, Oliver. You joke so uniquely. Is that bad? While Emma was digesting the information, the boss gave her a list of tasks. I hope I won't be gone for long. Samantha greeted him with feigned joy. Oliver, you're like my own. Avoiding me. You imagined that. There's just absolutely no time. Interesting. You say there's no time, but yesterday morning, you hurried somewhere out of town. Oliver was unpleasantly surprised. How do you know about my movements? Are you really stalking me? You have a bad opinion of me, Oliver. I haven't stooped to that. Let wives keep an eye on their husbands. But I... What about you? Finish your thought if you started. Your car is very noticeable. I saw with my own eyes how you sped out of town. I'm just used to going for runs in the morning. The conversation was very unpleasant. Oliver felt how Samantha, with her sharp, brightly manicured claws, tried to penetrate his heart. This image appeared so vividly before him that he couldn't hold back. Vampire. Oliver, who are you talking about? Do you see things that aren't there? No, Samantha. I'm talking about you. I have the feeling that you're draining the life out of me. And are you displeased by that? Samantha came so close to him that he felt her breath on his face, and the subtle fragrance of her perfume made his head spin slightly. Taking advantage of the man's momentary weakness, Samantha began to whisper into his ear. Oliver, why don't we meet in a different setting? You know where I live. Believe me, you won't be bored with me. Oliver took a deep breath, and the illusion disappeared. Clearing his throat, he calmly said. Samantha, I'm married, and I love my wife very much. The woman burst into a feigned laughter. Did you really believe that I wanted to lure you into my apartment? Oliver, it's just a joke. And you fell for it. He really wanted to believe that Samantha just wanted to play a little prank, but in her eyes, he saw coldness. And he also read in her gaze the desire for revenge. For almost a minute, they looked at each other, and both didn't know how to break this prolonged pause. Finally, the office owner, in a tired voice, said. Go, Oliver. It didn't take even two days before they coincidentally met again in the parking lot. Oliver realized that Samantha was waiting for him here, and he decided to pay her back for the previous incident. Did you decide to ambush me here? Right. Quietly and unobtrusively. You fool, Oliver. There are cameras everywhere here. Just, I've got another force majeure with my car. Can you give me a lift? Jump in. Oliver intuitively felt that Samantha was up to something, and he wasn't wrong. 
The woman didn't hurry home when the car stopped at the entrance. Maybe you'll come in for a cup of tea? Or if you want, I have something stronger. Oliver said quite harshly. Samantha, stop it. This is too much. And I don't like it. Choose another victim for yourself. The woman slammed the car door loudly. You'll regret this bitterly, Oliver. The next morning, Emma, with a trembling voice, reported. Oliver, the boss is waiting for you. Hurry up. The audience in the boss's office lasted no more than five minutes. The director ominously leaned over the table, giving a piercing look to the young employee. Oliver, I've received information that you're dealing with your personal matters during working hours. That's not true. Where are the facts? The director's face turned purple. You're asking me for facts? Don't you think, Oliver, that you've spread your wings too soon? Perhaps we made a mistake in trusting you with such a responsible position. You'll have to go back to your previous place. I understand. Should I write a resignation letter right now? Get out. The director's secretary, probably accustomed to daily turmoil, smiled sweetly. Oliver took a sheet of paper and immediately wrote a voluntary resignation letter. He decided not to upset Elizabeth for now. Citing fatigue, he went to bed earlier. But as soon as he closed his eyes, his mobile phone rang. Samantha's voice came through the receiver. Oliver, relax, it's over. I don't understand, what's over? I think you got what you wanted. I'm not someone you can manipulate. You don't need to explain. I know it perfectly well. In short, consider that there was no resignation letter. And don't be late for work. Oliver spent the entire night without sleep, and in the morning, he got up earlier than usual. Elizabeth murmured. Oliver, did mystery call you again? Sleep, it's just something I have to do. There are some matters that need to be settled today. Well, go ahead, take care. Good luck to you. As he was leaving town, Oliver absent-mindedly looked in the rearview mirror. I hope that lunatic didn't start stalking me? But Samantha chose a completely different way of getting even. As soon as Elizabeth fell asleep again, the phone rang. Oliver probably forgot something. But a strange female voice answered her. Darling, you're oversleeping your happiness. Your husband has a lover, and he's just headed to her. Elizabeth, still half asleep, didn't immediately understand what was being said. I'm sorry, you've got the wrong number. She was about to hang up, but she heard. Don't hang up. Aren't you Elizabeth Oliver? A shiver ran down the woman's spine. Who are you? It doesn't matter. Consider me a well-wisher. Approximately twice a week, and sometimes more, he goes to her outside the city. And yesterday, he even wanted to quit because work was getting in his way. But. The phone emitted short beeps. Just five minutes ago, Elizabeth would have clawed the eyes out of anyone who dared to say that her Oliver could cheat on her. But now, her frightened consciousness was feeding her strange phrases. Why doesn't he want another IVF? Probably because he has other interests now. Where is he going so early? Clearly not to work. And most importantly, he's not telling her anything. But they never had secrets from each other before. How many years have they been together? They say that almost any man wants to spice up his life after a few years of marriage. Elizabeth grabbed her head. None of this made sense. She needed to talk to him. No, she couldn't. But what if there's no lover? Oliver will be very offended because they've always trusted each other. It means she needs to ask somehow. At least something that will help her understand if she needs to dig further. Elizabeth never watched him, checked his phone, and always trusted him during their life together. And now she was trying to convince herself that anyone could have called out of anger, out of offense. But he really is leaving. Where is he right now? 
It's half past seven. The office opens at 8.30. Oliver has to be at work by nine. The feeling was strange. The brain said she needed to check so that the facts weren't lying, but her soul screamed, he can't. She didn't know how much time had passed while she sat there thinking like that. Then she looked at the clock. Nothing to it. Almost eight. Elizabeth rushed into the shower. She couldn't be late for work. Elizabeth loved her job very much, especially dealing with pregnancies. No matter how many times she had done it, she always watched with pleasure as a new life grew and developed inside another patient. She approached her office and smiled at the patients. You can come in five minutes. Hello, Elizabeth. Good morning, Elizabeth. Her mood returned to normal. Family problems shouldn't interfere with work. Everyone here has their own problems. Towards the end of the working day, a colleague came to see her. Elizabeth, I didn't see you at the cafe for lunch today. She smiled. I have no appetite, Henry. Henry was the head of the gynecological department. He was a good doctor and an even better friend. They became friends as soon as Elizabeth started working. Not only with him, but also with his wife, Grace, who worked here as an anesthesiologist. So, what's up with your mood? I can ask Grace to give you a quick shot. Elizabeth smiled. Your Grace is always eager to give shots. Henry looked at her attentively. Okay, Elizabeth. We've known each other for a while. Come on, spill the beans. No, let's go to the cafe. You haven't eaten today. You can tell me there. Elizabeth sighed. She knew Henry too well. Resisting was futile. They sat at a table in the corner. It didn't take five minutes before Grace plopped down on a chair nearby. Elizabeth smiled. Could it be any different? Henry and Grace, they were like inseparable. They couldn't stay apart for more than fifteen minutes. Such love could be envied, especially considering they already had two children. Elizabeth always believed that her love with Oliver was even stronger. Until today. Now she simply didn't know what to think. After listening to Elizabeth, Henry said, Oh, come on, I won't believe that Oliver is cheating on you, even if you cut me. Grace tossed her hair, I won't believe it either. Someone just played a nasty trick on you. Elizabeth looked up at them, then how do you explain that he leaves somewhere early in the morning? Well, Elizabeth, you're strange. You could have asked where. Just don't talk about trust and distrust. You can simply ask. There's nothing wrong with that. And how do you explain his refusal of the third IVF? Henry sighed, Elizabeth, I think you're overthinking this. Isn't it easier to tell everything to Henry and ask him questions directly? Oliver is not the kind of person who lies and evades. Suddenly, Elizabeth sniffed. But what if he confirms everything? Henry and Grace exchanged puzzled looks. Something like that cannot be true. But what if? Well, just in case. An awkward pause settled over the table. Elizabeth weakly smiled. Henry, can I stay on duty today? I'm not ready to talk to Oliver yet. Henry brightened up. You'll save me. The second doctor got sick, asked me to find a replacement for her. So, stay. She sent a text to Oliver, saying she was staying on duty, and it was a busy shift, no time to call. She knew that when she wrote like this, Oliver wouldn't bother her. She placed the phone on the desk in her office and went for the evening rounds. Elizabeth the door to the office swung open with a creak, and a sleepy nurse appeared on the threshold. Her eyes were huge. A patient has been brought in. Threat of a miscarriage. Elizabeth jumped up. How come? She was fine this morning. Everything was good. She said these words on the run. Elizabeth understood everything as soon as she saw the woman. 
A huge bruise adorned her eye, and her arms were covered in bruises. How, again? The woman, who appeared to be just over thirty, immediately burst into tears. Elizabeth, I don't know what got into him. He came home from work, started interrogating me like a madman, asking about who, when. And he swore that he would never swear again. I told him to go away. That the child would be only mine. And now. Elizabeth examined the woman and thought about what a fool her husband was. They had been together for more than ten years. Everything would have been fine if it weren't for her husband's pathological jealousy and the absence of children. Then God gave them such a gift. But the woman's husband went crazy. He didn't believe the child was his. The first time she was brought to the hospital was when she was only three months pregnant. The situation was exactly the same. The patient herself practically begged not to call the police. The child was unharmed then, so Elizabeth listened, succumbed to her tears, and didn't call the police. Especially since her husband, just like the patient herself, was crying on a bench near the hospital. Two months later, she was about to give birth, and now this. You said everything was fine with your husband. What made him prepare for the arrival of a child? The woman cried silently. Elizabeth straightened up. Take the patient to the examination room. After the examination, I will call the police. She looked out the window. Of course, the husband was already pacing under the windows. The nurse said he brought her himself and was yelling like crazy for someone to help his wife and his child. As soon as Elizabeth began to examine the patient, she couldn't remember her name, although she always addressed her by her name. And now it just flew out of her head. She immediately shouted, Stretcher, prepare the operating room. The woman cried out loud, Elizabeth, please, I beg you. Save my child, save my child. What were you thinking about before? You know your husband very well. Oh, Elizabeth. And he can be understood. The child is not really his. He cannot have children at all. And he almost accepted it. He said he would learn to love him. But then the mother-in-law. She keeps singing in his ear. Elizabeth was shocked. Lord, what twists life throws. His child, not his. What's the difference? Who gave him the right to beat a pregnant woman? And with such a temperament, he would have beaten the child too. The patient, now Elizabeth remembered that her name was Mia, looked at her with fear. Apparently, she wanted to object but couldn't. Quickly, girls, quickly. The nurses almost ran with the stretcher down the corridor, and Elizabeth rushed to wash her hands and change. The baby was born small, weak, but quite viable. The neonatologist said with a smile, Well, look at how active he is. We're going out. They moved the woman to the ward, and Elizabeth, changed, went outside. A man approached her from the darkness. Hello? How is Mia? And what, afraid you'll have to answer? The man lowered his head. Well, who isn't afraid? But I'll answer. What to do if he's such a fool? The main thing is that everything is fine with her and the pregnancy. No more pregnancies. Elizabeth deliberately said it that way. Let him suffer, that scoundrel. Technically, she didn't lie. There really is no pregnancy. Yet, in a way, she didn't tell the whole truth. She wanted to see the face of that scoundrel. He paled, then beads of sweat appeared on his forehead. Elizabeth threw at him. The boy is Mia's. No predictions for now. She was never cruel, but it was as if something had come over her. She wanted to hurt the person who had committed such an act. In the morning, when she came home, Oliver was already gone. Elizabeth deliberately didn't rush. She didn't know how to behave with her husband. She thought that some decision would come by itself by evening. Although she didn't want any decision. 
she wanted to rewind time. So there wouldn't be that call, no suspicions. She needed to sleep because at three o'clock she had an appointment with her doctor. Despite Oliver's objections, Elizabeth decided to undergo another examination before in vitro fertilization, IVF, just to tell him later that everything is ready. There would be no turning back. So he would have to accept it. Oliver sat at his desk, staring at one point. When he entered the office, of course, he met Samantha. Oliver, hi. He muttered something in response, but Samantha wouldn't give up. Well, why are you so gloomy? As long as I'm with you, no one will fire you. And she looked at him very meaningfully. Oliver found this look unpleasant. He understood perfectly well that Samantha expected gratitude from him, and he also guessed what kind of gratitude. He smiled. Samantha, you might as well say that you didn't tip off the boss about me to then save me. Do you even understand that I love my wife, and I don't need any intrigues with you or anyone else? Samantha snorted contemptuously. You're like from the last century. Well, we'll fix that. You love your wife. Well, you amused me. And she walked down the corridor, swaying her hips, and Oliver suddenly realized that now they wouldn't be able to work together. He slowly headed to his office. He loved his job. Besides, becoming who he was now took many years of hard work. And now, because of some affectionate chick, everything had to change. He raised his head. Emma stood in front of his desk. Her huge eyelashes looked sternly upward because of surprise. Oliver, are you okay? I've been calling you, calling you, and you don't hear me at all. I was thinking about something, Emma. Is it because of her, right? Because of Samantha? Oliver looked surprised at the secretary. Where do you know this from? Well, everyone knows. She always chooses herself a victim. Only she took you seriously. Aren't you, like, classmates or something? Why does she dislike you so much? It's not about her disliking me. Oliver smiled again. Rather the opposite, but it doesn't matter now. Tell me, Emma. Is the boss in his office? Can you find out? Yes, of course. I'll find out now. The girl headed for the door but stopped halfway. You're not planning to quit, are you? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Emma returned to his desk. Oliver, but it's not right. You can't do this. You understand that she's not right. Why are you planning to quit? Well, I don't see any other options right now. Well, how about me? Emma was almost in tears, then looked at him. Okay, you know what? Take a vacation. While you're on vacation, maybe something will change. Oliver laughed. Emma, what can change here? Well, I don't know. Maybe Samantha will find another victim. Emma fluttered away, making a few swings with her huge eyelashes. Oliver pondered. Indeed, when was the last time he was on vacation? Five years ago. Just when the funeral notice for Logan arrived. He remembered that time very well. Back then, everything was unclear to him. Now, after several years, he finally began to understand a little of what led his brother to go to hell. When Oliver and Logan had that conversation at the train station, Oliver was sure that his brother would definitely marry Arya. But time passed, and there was no news about Arya. If Logan met her, or at least saw her, he would definitely tell his brother about it. But Logan kept silent. He had heard about Arya from his brother only once. Arya is here. What? Are you serious? Oliver didn't even need to ask which Arya, because it was clear from his brother's face. Are the relationship not going well, Logan? Logan even pounded his fist on the table. Not going well? That's an understatement. I don't understand what's in her head. It feels like a constant earthquake. 
Oliver laughed, but there was a painful pang in his soul. He imagined Logan holding Arya tightly. He hurried to push away these thoughts. Well, do you want me to talk to her? Logan looked at him with fear. Oliver, I beg you, don't meet with her. Why? Oliver looked at his brother in bewilderment. Because she'll see you, and she'll forget about my existence immediately. Now Oliver understood that his brother, a graduate of the military academy, felt as insecure as a child who had just come to kindergarten. The next meeting with his brother took place about a week later. Logan just had no face. Logan, what happened? Something with your parents? Oliver's heart skipped a beat because Logan was, as they say, in fine fettle. No, everything is fine with my parents. He went to the kitchen and sat down. Got anything to drink? Oliver raised an eyebrow. I do. He put cognac and sliced lemon on the table. Suspicions were already arising that all this was because of Arya. Well, what happened? Is it really Arya? Logan waved his hand, then clenched his fists. She, she. I'll kill her. You know, she was so happy when I arrived. We walked, went to a cafe. In general, everything was fine. I wanted to propose to her not to let her go anymore. She casually asked as if by accident, do you know that she came? I said yes, that you sent greetings. And that's it. Arya as if someone replaced her. She looked at me, just greetings, right? And this morning I came, and Amelia was in tears again. Arya took off as usual and didn't say where. And she didn't even tell you anything? Well, not quite. She handed me a letter. Logan handed him a piece of paper. Oliver didn't really want to read other people's letters, but he unfolded it anyway. In the middle of the sheet, there was one word, sorry. Well, what, Arya is in her repertoire. And what do you think of doing? Oliver tried to speak as calmly as possible so that Logan wouldn't notice the turmoil in his soul. I've already decided everything. Enough is enough. I'm tired of this. He handed over some paper. Report to the military enlistment office. Have you lost your mind? Where are you heading? It's dangerous there. I know it's dangerous. But you forgot, I'm still a military man. Well, be a military man here. No, brother. I've made up my mind. Just help mom somehow tell her all this. This turned out to be a difficult task. Mom cried, begged Logan to abandon this venture. But all in vain. A year later, a funeral notice arrived. That time was the hardest. Mom shouted that it couldn't be, that she didn't believe it. They supported her. Elizabeth, with a full set of medicines, was always there. Then a stroke for mom, a heart attack for dad. Now, thank God, everyone has recovered. Only Logan's photo, which stood on the fireplace at their parents' house, constantly reminded of those days. He decisively took the sheet. He will write a vacation application, and then it will be seen. Emma is absolutely right. Strangely enough, the boss signed the application without a word. Oliver quietly thanked him and left the office. And of course, he immediately ran into Samantha. Oliver, what are you doing here? I think I don't have to report every step I take to you. You're wrong, you absolutely have to. And by the way, there's a business trip coming up soon. I think we'll go together, just the two of us. Elizabeth, I'm home. Silence was the only response. He bit his tongue. She had just finished her shift, and here he was making noise. Oliver tiptoed into the bedroom, but there was no one there. Odd. Was she on another shift right away? He took out his phone. Elizabeth, where are you? I came home, and no one is in bed. It seemed like she was speaking with an unnatural tone. 
I'll be back soon, just had to step out for a bit. Why are you home? I'm on vacation. Elizabeth was genuinely surprised. He hadn't been on vacation for a long time, and they had planned to finally go on vacation together and spend some time. What? You didn't say anything. Well, it just happened. Elizabeth, to be honest, was very surprised. Oliver wasn't on vacation for a long time, and they had been planning to go on vacation together for quite some time to spend some quality time. Oliver, how? You didn't say anything. That's how it turned out. While Elizabeth was on her way, she thought that Oliver's voice seemed unusually cheerful, or maybe it was just her imagination. Oliver was all kindness. He was talking to Elizabeth about something, and she was absent-mindedly listening. She thought that things weren't quite right lately. She thought she needed to tune herself into a positive mood, but it wasn't working. Elizabeth, are you listening to me? Oh, sorry, Oliver. I got lost in thought. What were you saying? Oliver looked at her in surprise. I'm saying we're going fishing with a friend for a couple of days. Then I'm all yours. Want me to do some repairs? Or maybe drive you to work and cook dinner? Whatever you want. Why repairs? Elizabeth didn't understand anything. Oliver laughed. Well, usually, if a husband's vacation doesn't coincide with his wife's vacation, he's supposed to do repairs. Elizabeth weakly smiled. No. We won't be doing repairs. She was afraid to ask him anything. Eventually, she decided that she would ask when he returned. Sometimes, he and David would disappear for two or three days. Oliver loved fishing. However, they rarely managed to escape. Elizabeth felt a bit relieved when she decided to postpone everything. She helped Henry pack his backpack, then realized there was no bread at home. Oliver was in the shower. She cracked the door open. Oliver. He peeked out from behind the curtain, his eyes sparkling mischievously. Oh, Elizabeth. Want to join? I'm all for it. She smiled. I need to get some bread. Forgot to buy it. He sighed so mournfully that she burst into laughter. Oliver asked. And without bread, is it impossible? No, Oliver. It's not possible. Elizabeth was already heading back when she met David's wife. He lived two doors down from them. The woman was coming out of the pharmacy. Hello? Oh, hello, Elizabeth. I'm just going from one pharmacy to another. Is someone in your family sick? Well, David has been lying with a fever for the second week. The doctor comes every day. He doesn't want to go to the hospital. But for the last two days, it seems to be getting better. Have you been to the store? Elizabeth felt like everything inside her broke. David is sick. So, no fishing trip with her husband. Then comes the logical question, where is her husband going? And the logical answer, to his lover. Otherwise, why would he lie? The rest of the evening passed in tension. Elizabeth said that her head was hurting a lot, and she wanted to go to bed early. Oliver hugged her gently. Do you want me to lie down with you? No, watch your football. He smiled, covered Elizabeth with a blanket, and left the bedroom, turning off the light. The woman lay for a long time with her eyes open, then began to blink frequently. But it didn't help. Tears quickly welled up in her eyes. She heard her husband getting ready in the morning. Elizabeth had already made a decision, but she continued to pretend to be asleep. Oliver kissed her, quietly left the apartment. As soon as the lock clicked, she jumped out of bed and grabbed her phone. The taxi driver just smirked when she told him to follow that car. But she didn't care. Well, what if he heads out of town? Then we'll go out of town. He looked at her with doubt. Do we have enough money? 
Elizabeth silently put several bills on the dashboard. Well, okay. It's even better for me this way. Drive one passenger and don't know any sorrow. They drove for a long time. Even the edge of the city appeared. Elizabeth anxiously watched her husband's car. When the city was already over, he turned onto the road leading to the outskirts settlement. Locally, this place was called the Old Town. It was a private sector. Odd. She knew that Oliver was born in the Old Town. Moreover, she often visited his parents. But they didn't live in a private sector. The car drove for a long time between houses and finally stopped at one. Oliver had just got out of the car when a five-year-old girl jumped out of the gate and rushed to him. Oliver picked her up, spun her around, and then opened the trunk. He took out a box. It wasn't difficult to guess that there was a doll in the box. It seemed to the woman that even from a distance she could feel how happy the little girl was. And Oliver hugged her, hugged her like a daughter. Turn around. The taxi driver looked at the passenger in amazement, who was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Well, what are you looking at? Turn around. He quickly turned around. Home. Yes. She leaned back in her seat. Now everything fell into place. Oliver has a daughter. So, there is someone who gave birth to his daughter. In other words, he doesn't distance himself from Elizabeth and their child's mother just out of pity for her. There simply can be no other explanations. She quietly sobbed. The taxi driver looked at her quietly, then spoke softly. Women are strange creatures after all. Look, what have you imagined now? You should have gone out. He would have been confused and answered all your questions. But no, you all draw conclusions on your own. And there is no way to convince you otherwise later. Elizabeth silently stared out the window. The last thing she needed was to discuss her problems with her husband with a random stranger. When the car drove away, she ran back to the apartment. No one would see her there. There, she could cry as much as she wanted. All evening, Elizabeth packed her things. She wouldn't let herself be treated like this, she wouldn't allow it. She didn't need his pity. Besides, let him be happy. Seeing his child twice a week, or even less, is wrong. In the morning, she arrived at work with a suitcase. Today, she's gone for a day, and tomorrow she'll start looking for an apartment in earnest. She won't interfere with Oliver's happiness anymore. No one noticed her luggage, and Elizabeth quickly hid the suitcase behind the couch. The nurse looked into the office. Elizabeth, here are all the histories. Yes, I'm coming. How's our patient? Oh, I don't even know what to say. She's crying. She asked the investigator not to start a case against her husband. Oh God, how the earth carries such fools. The nurse looked at her in fear. Elizabeth had never allowed herself such statements in her life. What happened to her in just one day? The shift went calmly, except that Oliver called about twenty times. Elizabeth simply turned off the sound on her phone. She had neither the strength nor the desire to talk to him. He will come home and read everything. She left him a long letter. Elizabeth wanted him to understand, she doesn't blame him for anything. Everyone wants happiness. If she can't give it to him, then it's very good that another woman could. In the evening, her doctor, with whom she underwent examinations for IVF, called. She didn't answer for a long time. She just didn't know what to say. After all, IVF requires the consent of both spouses. Finally, she picked up the receiver. Hello? Hello, Elizabeth. I have not very good news for you. Inside, for some reason, everything contracted. I'm listening to you. I consider it inexpedient to do IVF because the embryo will definitely not survive. You see, everything was already very complicated, and now the age is playing against us. 
if for life one can consider him young, then in our case, it works against us. Elizabeth answered him with an even voice. I understand. She just disconnected. She didn't want, and couldn't, listen to the doctor's long reasoning about millions of people and so on. In the morning, she went outside and froze. Right in front of her stood Oliver, looking at her in a way that made Elizabeth shiver. Well, hello, wife. Oliver, let's not have a showdown on the street. Why, it's all clear. Is it clear? Clear to whom? It's only clear to you. But I don't understand. How can my wife, the woman I love, the woman I trusted, think such things about me? To decide that I lie, cheat, and then come and lie in bed with you. Elizabeth couldn't find the right words. How dare he? If at first, when she first saw him, she felt like crying, now she wanted to scream and yell in injustice. She's the victim, and he behaves as if Elizabeth dared to offend him. Oliver, don't shout, please. Let me pass. Where are you going? Clearly not home. Me? No. We'll figure out what to do with the apartment later. For now, I have things to do. Honestly, Elizabeth was a little afraid of Oliver. She had never seen him so angry in her life. She even thought, she spoke about the patient, and now she's standing here herself, afraid of her husband. She tried to bypass Oliver, but it didn't work. Oliver grabbed her suitcase in one hand, her hand in the other, and dragged her to the car. Oliver, what are you doing? He stopped abruptly. That's it, be quiet until you have something to say. He put her in the car, slammed the door. Elizabeth didn't even make an attempt to move. I wonder what he's going to do. Take her into the woods? Introduce her to the mistress? Or lock her up at home? The woman somehow calmed down. She's not interested in living anymore. So, whatever happens next, she doesn't care. She turned up the music and turned away from the window. The car wasn't moving, it was flying so fast that Elizabeth looked at the houses passing by with apprehension. Finally, she realized they were turning into the old town. She looked at her husband in amazement. Where are you taking me? He smirked, and then Elizabeth noticed that Toshka, who usually hung on the glass, was not there. Where's the hippo? Oliver cast a quick glance at the spot where Toshka used to be. With his owner. So, all this time, a gift from your lover was riding in our car, and you're talking about it so calmly? Elizabeth was just seething with indignation. Oliver suddenly pressed the brakes. She almost hit her forehead on the glass. Elizabeth, I always considered you smart, the smartest, the most beautiful. Don't disappoint me. He started moving again. Oliver, tell me, is it true that you submitted a resignation letter? He looked at her in surprise. True, but I don't understand, how do you know? She shrugged, but didn't have time to say anything. The familiar house appeared. Elizabeth bit her lip. Oliver also tightly pressed his lips. They stopped. He opened the door and helped her out. The woman had a slight tremor. Uncle Oliver. The girl was running towards them. Elizabeth looked at her in surprise. Not only did the girl not call Oliver a dad, she also resembled Elizabeth. The woman even shook her head. No, still looks like her. Uncle Oliver. Grandma got sick. As soon as you called, she fell ill. Complaining about blood pressure. And she says that the restless mom from the other side doesn't let us miss her. Elizabeth's eyes widened. From the other side? Mom? Now she completely stopped understanding anything. Is this your Elizabeth? Yes, meet, Elizabeth, this is Victoria. Victoria, this is Elizabeth. The girl smiled and extended her hand to Elizabeth, palm up. The woman mechanically shook it lightly. 
You are beautiful. Elizabeth couldn't help but smile, but the next second she almost cried. You look like my mom, only my mom is not here anymore. Oliver quickly took control of the situation. Let's go inside. It's time to tell Elizabeth everything, calm grandma down. Not yet, of course, but someone is too curious. They entered the house. The girl jumped off Oliver's hands and rushed into the room. Granny, Granny. Uncle Oliver has come. He brought Elizabeth with him. Elizabeth looked around. An unremarkable house. Photos on the wall. She approached. A beautiful girl looked at her, somehow mysteriously resembling her, Elizabeth. Next to the photo of this girl, a much younger Oliver was hugging her from both sides. She was stunned. It was her Oliver, still very young, and Logan, her husband's brother, who died a few years ago. Now she completely stopped understanding anything. Oliver mentioned the girl once in passing. They were friends, like a younger sister to him, and Logan was in love with her. But then the girl left, and no one knew anything about her. A few minutes later, an elderly woman came out of the room. She wasn't very old, but it was evident that she had been through a lot. Hello, Elizabeth. I must apologize to you. I asked Oliver not to tell you anything until everything becomes clear. I couldn't even think that such passions would flare up. I'll make tea now. I'll set the table, and we'll talk. Elizabeth rushed to her. Sit down. Take a break, and Victoria and I will set the table. Right, Victoria? Yes, yes. I'll show everything. Half an hour later, they were all sitting at the table. My aria was special. She never showed how much her soul hurt. Only when she wanted to cry, if someone offended her, she just hid so that no one could see her tears. She constantly got into fights. Always tried to prove something to someone. Oh, she tortured me. I hoped so much that she would grow up, and everything would pass. If it weren't for Oliver. He was an authority for her. I only understood later why. It was too late already. My Arya grew up. Only she was tossed from shore to shore. I couldn't bear to watch her floundering. And then she came. I was glad. Logan started coming to us. Logan had been in love with her for a long time. How I hoped that everything would work out for them. I heard he stayed overnight at our place twice. I almost calmed down, and then. I don't know what happened between them. But one day or even night, Arya packed up and left. And Logan left to serve the next day. Logan died first. Arya didn't know about it. She only found out when she came. She came here to me to die. The woman wiped away tears, and Oliver took the initiative. Arya was always like that. She fought on her own until the end. But when it became clear that she couldn't cope, she returned to Amelia. Not to be pitted but so that Victoria wouldn't be left alone. She apologized to her grandmother many times for her behavior. But that's just the way she was. In all her mischievousness, she loved her grandmother with a kind of love that only she could understand. Just before her death, she told Amelia what prompted her to call me. Not immediately, almost a year passed. And she called me only because the Child Protection Services became interested in them. No. Not because the conditions were unsuitable or Amelia was too old. But because some nasty neighbor complained. They don't say they'll take Victoria away, but they constantly come with some incomprehensible inspections. Amelia's blood pressure spikes from the stress, and that's all they need. Elizabeth looked up at Oliver, fearing to hear the worst. That Victoria is his daughter. She understood that he didn't mention seeing Arya again. But there was still some fear. What did she tell you? She said that Arya confessed before her death that Victoria's father is Logan. Elizabeth even took a deep breath. 
now she had so many feelings that words couldn't convey. She felt ashamed, incredibly sorry for Arya, Logan, and Victoria. She imagined what Logan's parents would feel learning that he had a daughter. Amelia, forgive me. I need to ask my wife one question. Elizabeth, you said that kind people pushed your thoughts. You have to tell me who. Oliver, I really don't know. In the morning, after you left, some woman called me very early and said that you had a lover and you were heading to her. She spoke things that a stranger couldn't know. She said that you often went there. And she also said that you were going to quit your job for your lover. Oliver clenched his fists. Now I understand where the wind is blowing from. But it's okay, Samantha, we'll talk later. Elizabeth barely unclenched the fingers she had squeezed herself while they were talking. Oliver, Amelia. But why did you hide it from everyone? Well, at least from me? Oliver cleared his throat. You see, Elizabeth, I didn't know how to tell you about it. We did a paternity test, and it will be ready in two weeks. In the meantime, I needed to be here as often as possible so that those snakes from child protection saw me. They can't do anything until the test is officially ready. Well, if I turn out to be Victoria's official uncle, then all of them will dance to my tune. I didn't know how to tell you all this because Arya was for me, I don't know how to explain it, she was like a sister, a friend, and an embodiment of what the one I love should be. I once set myself the rule that Arya is like a sister to me. If she weren't here, I would probably be married to her, not you. I'm telling you all this now so that you know, so that there are no misunderstandings between us. I love you, Elizabeth. And always have. Aria is something else. I don't know how to say it correctly. It's the past. Something I had once in my life. Something I often remember. But it's different. Not like what we have. They sat in silence for a while. Oliver, what do we do now? Well, since you already know everything, I think Amelia and Victoria need to stay with us for some time. Amelia will get treatment. She's been forced to go to the hospital for a long time, but she has no one to leave Victoria with. And I'm on vacation now, I'll stay with the girl. Amelia waved her hand. Oliver, it's not necessary. What if your parents come? They'll see us, get upset. Amelia, sooner or later, they'll have to get upset. Elizabeth, what do you think? I think it's the right thing to do. I'll talk to my people, find out where we have the most competent doctors. We'll take Amelia there. Besides, I have a whole bunch of days off that I can take. Oliver pressed her close to him. Darling, I never doubted you. Soon they were already packing their things. Elizabeth felt as if some ticks had been released, and Oliver too. They were almost ready when the door opened, and two women appeared in the doorway. Good day. Decided to run away? Is that the matter? Oliver sighed, but Elizabeth stepped forward. One of the women looked at her with fear and mumbled. Oh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, remember, right? I just can't forget you. Only forget, and here you are again at the doorstep. And now, look at that, you're defending the rights of a child. Am I right? The woman didn't know where to look. Elizabeth, no, it's not us. It's your new neighbor. Just bothered us with anonymous letters and calls. But we're involuntary people. We have to report. So go ahead. Write the truth, not dance to the neighbor's tune. You know, scoundrels. I'm not a prude, but it seems to me, you have nothing to do in such an organization. Let's go. Can't you see, we're bothering people. They quickly left, and Amelia looked at Elizabeth in admiration. How did you handle them? Elizabeth laughed. I never thought I'd meet this lady here. She's not very nice. It turns out my profession can bring benefits not only in the hospital. 
they loaded the things into the car. The same neighbor who desperately needed part of Amelia's garden where her woodshed stood watched them attentively. Oliver sat the woman in the car and headed towards him. So? Oliver looked around, as if making sure that no one could hear them. He tried to talk to him politely several times, but the neighbor sent him away. Now Oliver decided that he needed to talk to him in the neighbor's language, or he might do something while they're away. Well. The neighbor rudely stared at him. If you don't calm down, I'll burn down your house and block the door. Got it? While the neighbor was recovering from shock, Oliver headed to the car. Only when the car started moving, the neighbor closed his open mouth. Amelia was admitted to the hospital the next day. Elizabeth and Oliver sat in the park while Victoria went to feed the ducks. In the evening, Elizabeth bought clothes for the girl and made her a beautiful braid. In the morning, while everyone was still asleep, she went somewhere and brought back a beautiful, fluffy dress. Now the girl looked like a little princess prepared for a photo shoot. Adults looked back, smiling warmly, saying what a little beauty she was. Elizabeth was proud, as if they were talking about her. Elizabeth, maybe you'll tell where you know this lady from. Elizabeth waved her hand. Some defender of children she is. She comes to me for an abortion about every six months. Oliver almost choked on the lemonade he was drinking at that moment. Wow. He turned to Elizabeth. Oliver, forgive me, please. I didn't believe it in my soul and heart, but the facts were there in my mind. He hugged her. Stop it. I'm to blame myself. I don't know why I wanted to wait for the test. Probably to convince myself that we couldn't abandon Victoria. Do you really think I could abandon her? Oliver rubbed his face forcefully. A lot has piled up lately. Samantha works in our firm. Well, you probably remember her. So, she decided that I should become her lover. I don't know what she's telling the boss, but he's been bothering my nerves a lot. I came back from vacation, I don't know if I'll stay or leave. Listen, maybe find a photo of your boss's wife. Our town is small. It can't be that she's never been to me at least once. What do you want to do? Nothing. Just, if he doesn't hear you, then I'll accidentally tell my misfortune. Of course, without any names. Well, I don't know. It seems a bit low. Elizabeth narrowed her eyes. So trying to take away my husband from me is humane? Oliver raised both hands. I'm afraid of you when you're in such anger. He took out his phone and scrolled through something for a long time. Here, she accidentally got into the frame. Elizabeth smiled. Well, now you can relax. She's my regular patient who likes to invent illnesses for herself. They looked at Victoria, who was not only feeding the ducks but also telling them something. Oliver, Elizabeth. This is how we meet. They both flinched. Oliver's parents were standing in front of them. And we just went out for a walk. The weather is wonderful. We should have called you. We could have walked together. Father looked at them suspiciously. Why are you so strange? Silent as if you've been struck dumb. Oliver didn't have time to answer. Uncle Oliver, a bird pecked my finger. Victoria ran up to them, crying. Elizabeth immediately took her in her arms. Does it hurt? No. Then why are you crying? Scary. Elizabeth laughed. Oliver's parents looked at them with surprise. Oliver, Elizabeth, who is this? Victoria stared at them, then smiled. I'm Victoria. Only now there are no moms and dads, and I became grandmas. Uncle Oliver is my uncle. And my dad is Uncle Oliver's brother. Victoria drummed up everything she could remember from endless adult conversations. Oliver had time to think that children were sent away when adults talked for a reason. They might not understand or even mix everything up. 
Oliver's mother turned pale and sat on a bench. Oliver, Oliver, I don't understand anything. He looked up at Elizabeth. There was nothing left but to tell everything. Mom, don't worry. And you, Dad, sit down. The father slowly sat down on the bench. Do you remember Arya? Of course, we remember. Logan was madly in love with her. I was so afraid that conflicts would arise. This is Victoria, Arya, and Logan's daughter. An ambulance still had to be called right to the park, but Oliver's now grandmother flatly refused to go anywhere. They all headed home to Henry and Elizabeth. They had to tell the whole story again. Tired Victoria fell asleep, and Elizabeth carried her to bed. Nearly two weeks passed. Elizabeth had already returned to work. Soon Oliver would have to decide something. There was no need for nannies. Oliver's mother, father, and Amelia coped well. Despite Victoria being only five, there wasn't a single club in town where they hadn't called, found out all the details, and noted them down for further discussion. Oliver went to work with a firm intention to quit. He would find something for himself. But he categorically didn't want to live in stress and work alongside such people. He was immediately called in by the boss. Emma looked at Oliver with a stern look and started packing her things. She wouldn't work here without her boss. Sit down, Oliver. Thank you, just for a moment. I'll give you my resignation right away. The boss thoughtfully played with Oliver's resignation letter. Okay, I'll sign it, but only after I tell you something. Samantha no longer works with us. Oliver's eyebrows shot up. How so? Yes. You know, I decided that there should still be good, decent relationships in the firm. Accordingly, good people. So, I would like to apologize and offer you to stay with a salary increase. You know, this is the best news in days. Although I already have enough of the good ones. So, should I throw this into the trash? The boss tossed the resignation letter into the trash and extended his hand. Apologize once again. And an hour later, Oliver received a call. Can you come pick up the test results? Can you tell me what's there? But we are not allowed to disclose it over the phone. I beg you, please. You are officially recognized as the girl's uncle. In the evening, the entire extended family gathered at Elizabeth and Oliver's house. Elizabeth looked scared, Victoria was happy. Well, I suggest we raise a toast to all of us. Amelia wiped away a tear. You will take Victoria from me now, won't you? Oliver smiled. We will not only take Victoria, but you too. Who will take this lady to school? You and Mom can share the responsibilities. That's your new assignment. Amelia looked around at the surprised faces at the table. But I'm a stranger to you. Oliver's mother even hit her fist on the table. Never say that again. You are our granddaughter's grandmother. Oliver raised his glass. Hooray. Everyone shouted, clinked glasses. And Victoria, who was sitting on Elizabeth's lap, whispered warmly in her ear. Elizabeth, will you paint my nails with that beautiful polish on your nightstand? Elizabeth burst into laughter. Of course.